Previously on the Jay and Dan podcast. So we got Grimace. Yeah. yeah. Ronald McDonald. We right. got him. Yeah. Sunday is Ronald's dog. Yeah, that's bull crap. He only appears in the Wacky Adventures of Ronald McDonald. Mm -hmm. The Wacky Adventures of Ronald McDonald. Mm -hmm. My mom had a raccoon coat. A raccoon fur coat. Again, whoa, we lived whoa, on a farm. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Back up. Mm -hmm. Sean O'Toole is joining us on the line. Can you confirm or deny that our mother used to have a raccoon fur jacket? She had a beauty of a raccoon <laughs> jacket. Mm -hmm. Well, it came on in my car the other day, and my I'm like... Hitting button. Stop! Stop it! <laughs> so I just ran into a tree. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the drum technique is, but you like to do the. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Although, again, if you dove into a pile of gold coins, it would hurt. Mm -hmm. Swallow wins. You're listening to the Jay and Dan podcast. Bellare. Velare. What? What language is that? That's Italian. I just learned that from Mike Gentili. It's perfect Italian. I could go into any Nona's house. She'd be like, oh, come eat. <laughs> <laughs> the Jay and Dan Podcast, episode number 30. Well, we made it. Yes. Woo. Brought to you by C. Alice. If you've got a couple of bathtubs on a cliff... <laughs> <laughs> and we're the podcast for you. That's the thing. You see those commercials and it's like, hey, I just took my dude pills. Let's go have a tub bath on the cliff. Uh, how are we going to get in and out of the tub? And when we get out of the tub, we're going to be freezing and then you're going to lose your dude. Um, and he's in the tub by himself because she's in the other tub. What sense does that make? <laughs> and why would you put go to all the trouble to put two clawfoot tubs next to each other just to look at the sunset? Yeah. And those tubs would probably be just full of... Like old tires and rats and bugs. Raccoons and raccoon <laughs> coats. Oh, didn't you have a secondary sponsor for the podcast? Oh, yes. Uh, this uh, podcast uh, also brought to you by Barbasol, America's number one choice for a close, comfortable shave. The road is tough, your spirit's strong, driving warm and on. So save America. America, you're looking good, handsome, free and tall. Close shave, America. Close shave, Barbasol. Close shave, Barbasol. Shave your nuts. Was that Toby Keith? <laughs> what? That was just weird. A lot of, uh... Again, Maybe I that was Brad Paisley. He's trying to make up for his uh, song with LL Cool J. I want to be in the studio when the guy's recording that. Just He's giving it his all. All right, guys, take six. Close shape, Bob. <laughs> I thought that sounded good. Let's go for beers. Uh, again, we're doing our housekeeping here from uh, the previous week's podcast, in which uh, the uh, my mother's raccoon coat was a hit. Now, before we get to that, this that we get need to get deep into the raccoon coat. But we should mention who's on the show to keep the people listening. Oh, okay. Aaliyah Jasmine Silvani is on the show from MTV and her new show, Play With AJ. So she is a... Uh, <laughs> she works with us, right? I've never met her. She works at Bell, Bell Media, so she works for many of the different networks at Bell Media. But MTV Canada is her main network. She did some work for the NHL Network last year. We can ask her about that. I wanted to get to know her a bit better, so I went to her website. It's blocked by Bell Media. How weird is that? Uh, could it be, does she have maybe an amateur porn video on there? <laughs> we'll find out from AJ later on. So let's get back to the raccoon coat. The huge hit. A lot of talk on Twitter, Tools, eh, about the raccoon coat? Uh, yes, uh, people loved it. Um, I called my mother on the way to the taping of this podcast. I, I said, Mom, you did have a raccoon fur coat, right? She said, yes. Said, there was a hat. She said, yeah, of course there was a hat. So my brother was wrong in implying there was no hat. And I found the whereabouts of said raccoon coat. You, It exists My still. mother said she donated it to the Theater Guild in Peterborough, Ontario. So she said, if you go there, my initials are inside it. So you can just probably borrow it. Let's go steal it. Let's make that a mission. So one night, 
next winter, yeah. I will wear it into work. I will go there and oh. borrow it from the theater guild and wear it into work. Just why? <laughs> Just walking like Kramer, getting his mom, getting that coat from his mom. Yeah. <laughs> Or him wearing the um, the Technicolor dream coat. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, just go and just stroll and be like, this is mine, <laughs> suckas. I'm walking out with this thing. Uh, here, let's so that was the, the follow-up. So, but didn't you get a lot of feedback on Twitter from people saying, just giving their opinion on raccoon fur coats? They all loved it. They, they couldn't believe it. No one was against it. And I asked my mom, I said, were raccoon coats a hit? She says, everyone had one. <laughs> What? Not everyone. Uh, I guess so. Well, maybe in the Peter Patch they did. So oh! next, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to the Peterborough Theater Guild next time I'm in Peterborough. I'll take a picture at least. So every single live theater production at the Peterborough Theater <laughs> Guild features a raccoon fur coat. It'll be like Annie, and Annie will be in this oversized <laughs> raccoon fur coat. Phantom of the Opera is in a raccoon fur coat. But are there no more costumes? It's the only coat donated. That's all we have. Phantom, put on the goddamn coat and get on the stage. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, raccoons. And uh, something else people pointed out from last week's podcast. Jason Strudwick, another hit. Yeah, he was great. Um, was Jason Strudwick's laugh eerily similar to producer Tim's? Let's hear the side by side. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Wow. Yeah, that is bang on. Now, I believe Kristoff has actually modulated Strudwick's laugh to sound like producer Tim's modulated laugh. Let's let's get a listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> Holy man. <laughs> <laughs> actually, Strudwick's laugh sounds like my dog from when he was getting the quills ripped out of his mouth. That's what he sounded like. Can we hear that? <laughs> that was it. I think I think Strudwick could replace producer Tim. Yeah. How great would that be if Strud's was our uh, producer? Now there's another comparison. A rusty fire hydrant could replace producer Tim. Whoa, whoa! Yeah, you're probably right. Um, so another uh, comparison people were making uh, Strudwick. They thought he sounded a lot like uh, popular self-help guru Tony Robbins. Oh, okay, so, okay, well then I guess, I don't know, I think I'm, I don't know which way I'm going to go, I guess it's kind of funny, is that a normal response, or which way, do I, I don't even know which way to go. Uh, I'm not exaggerating, I do weekends, and what I do, I do more than that, obviously coach people, but I'm into immersion, because how'd you learn language? You didn't learn it by just learning principles, you got in it, and you did it so often that it became yeah, real. I can see it. Yeah, very similar, they kind of look alike too, maybe they're brothers. Tony Robbins creeps me out he's got a big jaw my brother sean he's been to tony robbins it's changed his life Wait, hold on hold on do we need to get sean o'toole no, on the line again he walked across coals everything hold on we need to get your brother on the line <laughs> no, again to talk about too much, this. sean i don't i think no christoph is nodding christoph <laughs> yeah. wants sean on the oh, line okay okay I'll we need to discuss now. this the fact that your brother walked across coals and it don't and now a lot of people probably did it there was a time when people thought Tony Robbins was pretty legit. It uh, it supposedly changed uh, my brother's life. Um, uh, answer your phone. <laughs> Dan now. texting his brother right now. Dan, I, I just got a, a tweet here. So did you from uh, Henry Templeman uh, at Hank Temps 13. He says, saw Jay and Dan leaving chapters together. If you guys are doing bedtime stories later, let me know. I can read good. We I'm, did just leave chapters together, in which I said, is this store going to exist in five <laughs> years? Yeah. I was going to buy the wealthy barber, but uh, decided I'll just keep flushing my, my money down the toilet. Yeah, you don't care about that. Investing's for suckers. That, look, look what good it did Kevin Bacon. Bernie Madoff took all his cash. Did he? Yeah, I think he did. I think that's why he's doing that TV show. It's pretty good. The following on CTV. The show that everyone's talking about now is Hannibal. Um, I watched that. Yeah, is it good? That guy's awesome. Yeah. It, it's the uh, the villain from the Bond from Casino Royale. The one who looks like Guy Boucher. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, that guy. He, he does a, a great job, so I'm into that one right now, and also the following. I've got to see how this thing plays out. My understanding is we have Sean O'Toole okay. on the line. Yes. Sean, Sean, sorry to bother you again, but your name came up in the podcast, which we're doing right now, and uh, because we had Jason Strudwick on last week, and we said how his voice sounded eerily similar 
to self-help guru Tony Robbins, and I mentioned <laughs> that you'd been to a Tony Robbins seminar. Yes, I've been to two. Two, two of them? Yeah. So, Sean, did you like do the the walk across the coals, and and uh, did you let him massage your shoulders, and what happened exactly? Well, uh, a friend of mine, Justin Hanley, was going to go to it the next night, and he was telling me all about it. And he said, "Tomorrow, I'm going to walk across coals." And I said, "This guy is a freak, and uh, <laughs> you're a clown that you're going to go to this thing, and uh, I think it's ridiculous." And the next day he called me and told me he had a ticket available for me, <laughs> about a $1,300 ticket. And I changed my mind. And I said, I'll go and see what it's about. And uh, that night I was fighting, uh, fighting my way to the front to uh, to walk over hot coals. Wow. So does Tony Robbins during these seminars, does he inadvertently bite people by mistake because his teeth are so big? <laughs> He's got some chompers, like a combine, but uh, the guy's a giant. Uh, you know, I did get close to him at one of the things, and uh, he, he must be close to seven feet tall, but I didn't see any uh, anyone get hurt by his teeth. Okay, so you did walk across the coals. I did, and uh, it was amazing. Yeah, describe that to us. Like, I, I've never actually talked to someone who's walked across coals before. Well, they, you know, I've heard all kinds of things like your, your foot must be pushing some cold air down and doesn't burn your feet. But uh, the whole thing is, uh, you know, at the start of it, even when I was in there getting Tony's ramp up, I was like, there's no way I'm going to do it. And the guy just gets you in such a, like, a state that you can do anything that, uh, like, no one could, like, I would have fought my way to get to uh, go over the cold. So it's a total mental thing. You, you get in, uh, you know, you put yourself in a, a state where you can do anything and uh, you just go across and uh, you just say cool moss. It's just like walking on cool moss and get, you go across and, and then uh, party. Oh, right. man. I, and, but it changed your life though. Like you, you genuinely were inspired <laughs> by this man. Uh, I was, and uh, my wife did not go uh, to the event, I went with Justin and uh, his wife, and uh, there's no ticket for her, and she couldn't stand me for months. <laughs> I, I don't think that had anything to do with the seminar, though. That had nothing. No, to do. no, no. Well, a bit, but uh, you know, yeah, yeah, you're just in a. Yeah, it's, it, it really is cool, and uh, uh, it gives you a lot of tools you can use in uh, any aspect of your life. Well, thanks for coming on to clarify once again. Uh, I thought it was going to be more about the raccoon coat. Oh, but by the way, anyway. we, no, we, we just had an update. Uh, I called our mother on the way here, and she said she donated it to the Peterborough Theater Guild. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, afterwards, after I talked to you guys last week, I was thinking about it. And that was an incredible coat. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a hat too. There I, was. I, I know. I, yeah. I clarified that as well. So you were wrong. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure, but then afterwards, thinking about that luxurious fur coat, uh, I thought I remembered the hat. Okay, well, thanks again. Okay. We Take miss care. you. We miss you, buddy. That's uh, okay. Sean O'Toole. Um, when it, we should clarify, when he ta walked across coals, it was just Bob Cole and his family lying down, yeah. right? Yeah, the entire family. <laughs> the they stripped down naked. And Bob's oh. like, oh, holy jumping. Or, no, we that would be Panger. We're trying to line up Bob Cole. <laughs> we're going to have Bob Cole on a uh, future podcast in like a couple weeks. I can't. I'm going to be like a kid. Don't jump on up. me there. Oh, don't jump on me there. Goo goo gaga. <laughs> I can't wait. If we do line him up. I'm going to be giddy. Oh, that would be pretty good. Oh. That would be pretty good getting Bob Cole on. His voice is just unreal. I went to Rye High. I went to Ryerson with his daughter, uh, Megan. Nice. And uh, she was super cool. She so nice. she moved from The Rock because they're from Newfoundland. That's correct. Uh, and uh, yeah, I went to Rye High and uh, I don't know what Megs is doing now. I think she's a sommelier. Really? Yeah. She's picking wines out. Hmm. I should get into that. I don't have the... Uh... The palate. They all taste the same to me. Like it's it, all it, like baby duck. It could be out of a box. It could be out of a $600 bottle. I don't, it's all booze to me. It's all getting you drunk. Speaking of getting drunk, we went to Fleetwood Mac uh, last night. Oh, yeah. Not together. We were all... Uh, Producer Tim was there, even. There you go. Looking out for love. He did... Lindsey Buckingham did a solo version of this song. 
killed he it. He just crushed it. Like, just by himself up there. Just awesome. Like, this guy is like, I don't know, how, tall, how old is he, Tools? He's 63? 64. 60. 63, 64. I know Stevie Nicks is 65. She sounded great. Wasn't moving as nimbly as maybe the 70s. Well, I uh, I noted that that uh, Stevie Nicks and my two-year-old daughter have the same dance move, the same go-to dance move that is spinning in a circle with your arms. <laughs> That's true. Doesn't quite look as good anymore. I, I was right next to the stage, and she came right up to us at one point, and she was sort of, you know, banging her tambourine and trying to get us into it. And just the look in her eyes said, I'm on some great painkillers right now. <laughs> It was good. They went on for like two and a half hours. They played for two and a half hours. They played tons of hits. They played all the hits. They were for a band that has been around for, what were they saying, like 35 years or yeah. something? Well, their first album well, it, came out it, like 74. So. It, it, they're, as, as, this, as the foursome now, they're, they're foursome now, but they were fivesome and, as of 75. Man, they were fantastic. I mean, Lindsey Buckingham looks fantastic. Yeah. He's, he's in incredible shape. Plays great guitar. It was fun. It was a fun show. Um, and they didn't play too much new stuff. I know you were concerned about that, Toolsy. Well, I, I love it. I said, yeah, there's still some chapters to be written to this band. <laughs> we were working on this little ditty. And then they play it, and that's when I went to the washroom. It's just... <laughs> and then I text my buddy. I'm like, yeah, hey, uh, Fleetwood Mac playing some new stuff. I hope they play more new stuff. <laughs> and he, uh, we've referred to him before, my buddy Superfly in Vancouver. He was going to the Prince concert. And he said, yeah, speaking of which, I'm going to the Prince concert tonight. I am being told that he plays nothing but new stuff. He plays no old hits. Because he did, as I was saying to you, he did a concert a couple of years ago. I know he came to Toronto where he played all the old hits and it was almost like, this is it. Better come to this show because that's all you're getting. And it's all new stuff from now on. I uh, that was never a good way to go. But it was funny when you when he did say that, when he said, we've been working on some new stuff. You could just tell the reaction from the crowd. They're like. Yeah, we just prefer if you just kept coming back and playing the old Dude. man, to be honest. Like, yeah. We well, really that, that, that's would... the one Simpsons episode where he goes to the concert. He's like, play something from the new album. <laughs> <laughs> something no one has ever said. I did witness. I was in uh, I was in what they apparently call the VIP section, and Ooh, I witnessed. Ooh, look uh, at me. Yeah, exactly. I'm a high roller. And uh, I witnessed a fight between like an 80-year-old woman and a 30-year-old woman. Wow. Who, who won? I'd uh, go with the scrappy old vet. The scrappy old vet just called security. She just wasn't having any of that, <laughs> dude. She, she wasn't. She was having none of that, dude. That's the uh, that's the fill in swear word, right? That's dude? right. Yeah, from a previous podcast. She was having none of that, but she, yeah, it, it's the classic thing where it's a baby boomer concert, so everyone's kind of sitting down, just enjoying the show, and uh, there's girls standing up in front of the eighty year old. They're dancing. They're young. They're having a great time too. This is the thing. You go to a concert, if you choose to sit down, that's fine. But you can't get mad at the person who stands up in front of you. It's a it's a rock concert. You just can't do it. And so the lady behind is like, sit down. I can't see <laughs> Lindsay and Stevie. <laughs> and the girl in front was like, shut up, you old bag. You shut your... Dude. Oh. And I was she just like, that? Jesus Christ. And I was like, security, security, over here, over here. And she's like, you dude, old bag. Just shut the dude up. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. So did she get kicked out? Yeah, she got the boot. Did she? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's harsh. Well, I mean, you can't yell at senior citizens. Up in my section, everyone, I didn't see them. You were in a box, a private box. That was in the TSN suite <laughs> with no one else. <laughs> didn't you show up like seconds before the show started? Showed thinking? up 10 minutes before they hit the stage. No one was in the place. The lady was just sitting there. Who was uh, serving people in the box? I said, "So, are we in the right place?" She goes, "Yes." No one here, and then four four people showed up. And they uh, they were fine, and then an hour and a half into the concert, four other people showed up. Did, they were probably just crashing it. Yeah. It's, Did you yeah. ask them who they were? No, oh, the concert was on. <laughs> I was lost in that new Fleetwood Mac song. <laughs> I actually thought the new Fleetwood Mac tunes were pretty good. I have to say, they're good. I, I'm a big fan of that band. They so. sold that place out, so uh, like 150 bucks a pop. They're doing pretty good on this tour. Yeah, and I believe they're playing Western Canada in May. So yeah, get on that train if you can. Look at that yeah, maybe maybe put on the raccoon coat and do <laughs> Phantom instead. 
<laughs> Stevie Nicks could rock that coat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she changed her clothes about 700 old, times. Old Spinny McGee. Yeah, Spinny was, she had a different kind of, I guess, what do you call it? Like a, what, the shawl? It's a shawl, right? They, she had like different shawls I on every time. Where I was. She might as well have had a raccoon coat on. A cape? <laughs> yeah, she had like different capes. I'm now a different <laughs> arch-villain. Uh, anyway, that was fun. I had a good time. Um, and then someone sent us a tweet this week. Uh, they got in a discussion. And you're going to get mad that I brought this up because it's a negative tweet. No, I never get mad. We, uh, we thank everyone. We get so many positive tweets, and I, I should pay more attention to those. But this guy was in a conversation with someone who said, hey, you got you to gotta listen to the podcast. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this guy's like, it's been going downhill since episode 10. You need more than just video and sound clips. Just, but the first 10 were horrible. <laughs> Heck. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you talking about? So go dude yourself. You yeah, dick. there you go, Toolsy. Finally, we're bleeping Toolsy. It's about time. <laughs> there you go. I like that. Um, oh, and uh, did you, you didn't get a chance to watch the Masters, the the end of the Masters this week. No, I at, watched it. Oh, you did? I uh, I turned my phone off. I Oh, you again, watched it I on the PVR. Mistake, made the mistake of booking dinner that night for my me and my wife at 5.30, right in the, the, the crucial time of the Masters. So I turned my phone off, didn't read anything, didn't listen to the radio, and then I uh, went home and, and watched it. Uh, it was great. What a finish. That was so, it was so awesome. And the thing that really struck me is like, Angel Cabrera, could he have been any more gracious in defeat? Like, the guy barely missed that putt. For birdie on the second playoff hole, like barely yeah. missed it, and then Scott knocks his down, and Cabrera's like, oh, "I guess I lost." I'm like, "Dude, you like, wow, that's amazing." It was two very likable guys. Like, I didn't know who I was rooting for. I, either way, you're going to be uh, a winner as a golf fan because both are great guys. And Adam Scott, as uh, a lot of the Peterborough listeners who listen to the podcast, my hometown, everyone wanted me to point out that Adam Scott is the name of a high school in Peterborough. And the name of an actor on Parks and Recreation. See, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, he's the one who's, well, marrying Leslie Nope or married to Leslie Nope. And Parks was a mayor when he was 14. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Boy, that's a funny show. That is. I love it. Um, and then, should we bring up this, too? Do you have this? But, uh, sh- oh, sorry. Just wait. Along the, the Adam Scott lines, yep. I asked you earlier, he's not dating Kate Hudson anymore. Uh, no, he's not. He hasn't been for a long time. Kate Hudson is, uh, I think, had a kid with the lead singer of Muse, who we really? discussed. Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure they're together. Matt Bellamy is his name. Where has she been? She hasn't been in any comedies in a while. I she think she'd be in the rom-coms, didn't she? I think she's raising kids, Dulcy. Hey, why are you so sexist? Where's the girl? <laughs> <laughs> Off with the timing is impeccable. I love it. Oh, here we go. Yeah, Matthew Bellamy. That's who she's with. Mike Gentilly confirmed it. She's just hanging out. You know who turned down that role in uh, Almost Famous, by the way, that she played? <laughs> who? Sarah Pauly, the Canadian uh, actress who, who was in, uh, uh, I don't know what the heck she was in. What was Sarah <laughs> Pauly in? Go? And uh, the Green Gables movies, maybe? And she's a director now. She directs stuff. People yeah. know who she is. Yeah, someone out there knows who she is. Yeah, she hey. turned it down. There he is. He looks like kind of like uh, from Lord of the Rings. We're looking at Matt Bellamy right now from Muse. He looks like one of the hobbits. Okay. I want to date a hobbit. So uh, the the tweet was sent out that uh, Leah Jasmine's coming on. Yeah. This guy uh, tweets in twenty bucks. Says that O'Toole won't stop hitting on her the entire podcast. Uh-huh. Hashtag creeping. Hashtag don't be that guy. Um. Well, Corey, who did send this. It should be noted that I will not even make eye contact with her in fear of HR. Yeah, that's a good point. She is a Bell employee, though her website is blocked by Bell Media. And someone sent me a tweet last week. I said, Dan, I was thinking of you because um, a new female employee asked for a ride home. I uh, I quickly said I was going to the washroom and then just went to, out the back door and left. <laughs> exactly. I said, perfect. Well played, sir. Exactly. <laughs> so you have to do it. Um, one thing we should mention, too, before we get to Aaliyah Jasmine, we're going to bring her here in just a second. Jordan Chason sent me uh, and Dan an email. Um, 
We were in Bathurst, New Brunswick this past summer for the Craft Celebration Tour. We went to the Acadi Bathurst Titan Arena. Beautiful rink. Man, it was Roberto nice. Roberto Luongo's jersey was getting retired. Patrice Bergeron played for them. Sean Couturier, Matthew Perot. So, uh, anyway, apparently, uh, Jordan just wanted us to mention this on the podcast, that Patrice Bergeron, Roberto Luongo, Bruno Gervais, Sean Couturier, Matthew Perot, part of a 28-plus line of investors to keep the Titan from being relocated. Um so there's there's a link. We'll maybe throw the link up on the Jay and Dan podcast Twitter if you want to check out all that information. But uh, we would love to. I don't like when junior hockey teams move from their communities, especially a town like that that has that beautiful rink. Why would you ever want them to leave? I mean, that's that's awful. Maybe there's, they've got an offer elsewhere. But okay, anyway, so you wanted us to mention that. that. Yeah, thank you very much, Jordan, for sending us. And that before email. we get to Aaliyah, we'd be remiss in not mentioning now uh, what a season for the Toronto Raptors. Oh, yeah, it finishes up, but uh, we're taping on a Wednesday, and they're finishing up against uh, the Celts yeah. tonight. And, yeah, just, just, just well, I think, the what did they have, 33 wins last year, and they're going to end with uh, 33 this year, maybe? Just like a that. great year by the Raptors. If, um... Big deuce here. If Brian Colangelo is brought back, will there be actual rioting by Raptor fans, if there are any actually left at this point? Yeah, he can't be back. And then uh, I feel for uh, Coach Casey, because if you bring in a new GM, he's got to be able to select his own coach. That's right. Which I wanted to ask you about that. Um, So McTavish, now in charge of the Oilers. So does that mean Kruger's out? Because he's going to want to select his own coach as well. He seemed to indicate in his Monday press conference that that coaching wasn't the problem. So my take is that Kruger's safe for now. But, I mean, it's such an old boys club. One of my favorite tweets was... That uh, when McTavish and uh, Scott Housing get fired, they'll re- be replaced by GM Tom Rennie and assistant GM uh, Steve Quinn. Tambellini. <laughs> <laughs> or bring back Pat Quinn. Or bring back Quinner. I, I mean, yeah, it's just, I. it was amazing to watch that press conference and see those reporters finally grill Kevin Lowe because I think Kevin Lowe was thinking he'd just stroll in there and it would be a coronation. And it's it can't be like that anymore. No offense to uh, Kruger, but... Uh... Guy Boucher? Or, I mean, Lindy Ruff? I like Boucher. He'd whip those guys into shape. Although, Lindy Ruff. Lindy would be great, I think. I think just they just want a different person in there, period. They and want someone different in there. Someone pointed out, too, uh, at work the other day, they said, remember when Brian Burke, uh, when he renewed Ron Wilson, and he said, hey, if we let him go, he'd be hired within seconds. Yeah, he, he still has does not have a job. He's sitting at home golfing. Well, you wouldn't be sitting at home golfing. You'd have to leave your house. Uh, Leah Jasmine is here with us. Hi, Leah Jasmine. How are you? I'm good. Hi, Jay. Hi, Uh, Dan. Leah, I tried to check out your website. Uh, It's blocked by Bell Media. Please explain. (laughs) Yeah, what is the deal with that? Why is that happening? I don't know. I didn't know it was blocked by Bell Media. Yeah, we were trying to check out your website. website? What did you put on there? It's just my, like, it's just clips from TV and pictures. What kind of clips? Where did you try to, like, like aliajasmine.com? Yes. I guess, yeah. Here at work. Here at, at Bell Media, Maybe where we I'm all work. Maybe I'm trying to drive you to the mtv.ca website to get my bio instead. Maybe. Maybe. So they're they're basically keeping you from, from advancing your career? <laughs> That's not right. No, they do a great job advancing See, look, my career. There's there's what I get. Oh, this is what happened. Oh, Dan's just, really just showing Alia Jasmine now. It's very strange. There is an email there where you just have to flip IT and email, and they can unblock it for you in like three seconds. Uh, oh, no. Untrue. I tried to get a website unblocked last week. <laughs> <laughs> it may or may not have been a gambling website, but they never got back to me. I, nothing. I thought you were going to say porn. No, I I'll have to try to get this one unblocked. Okay. I know the IT uh, folks by name because I talk to them every single night because <laughs> my my computer at work is about to explode. You're a bit of a complainer. Whoa! Yeah, a bit of a complainer. So, AJ, okay, we, the reason we wanted to talk to you is because you have a new show coming up I on do. MT- can MTV I Canada. Can I say something? Of course I you listen can. to you guys all the time um, on my way to work, and I didn't realize that you did this show in Suits too. Well, I mean, because basically what happens is they give us a studio for uh, one hour a week, and they don't give us passes to the building, 
<laughs> and they say uh, you can do it right before your TV show, and you better get it done then, or it will never get done. So we have to dress up for the TV show. You guys look and do good. It on you the look way. so. Sh- I didn't. I thought you were in here in like jeans and t-shirts and right. like, Here's the very sweatpants. Like, you look so sharp. It's like short this is shorts. Double like O Seven broadcast radio in here right well, now. Yeah, we try to keep but, it real. But this is the other thing. We get our suits for free from work, so we take full advantage. We just wear them all the time. That's true. We don't have to buy other clothes. Go shopping. Suits. Into the pool. Suits. I just love that you look like (laughs) TV broadcasters on the radio. Like, no one can see you, but you look amazing. Well, speaking of looking amazing, you look amazing. And shouldn't this show maybe be televised now that I think of it? (laughs) Like, is that the first be, time you've thought of it? Yeah, it actually is. Because before I thought nobody's going to want to look at us. But now that you're here. <laughs> yeah. Why not, eh? That makes sense. If old, people only saw what you're wearing. Wow. I'm, I'm so dressed down today. Oh, no, you know. I, was just, I, was, I can't. You know what? You know. How was like five minutes before he started hitting on her? <laughs> here's the thing. So though. here was, what did he say? What did the guy say? No, here's the thing. I wanted you guys to play with it and then we would make it sound like you're wearing something like very risque. Oh, uh, well, it's the answer is breasts, by the way. The reason you can't get on my website is because of oh. the booby ball video. Let's oh. talk about that. That's probably get, what it is. Let's, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. That clip right there is going to be used in every podcast for the, the rest of history. The the answer is breasts, by the way. <laughs> it just can came breasts, to me, but that's probably why. Can breasts be it. the uh, the swear word? Bleep? We'll make it this next week. week. Okay, we'll do it next week. Okay, we, we usually use it. Do you want me to say it sexier? Yeah, please. Breasts. Oh, Was that good. better? Yeah, breasts. give us a couple of them. Dude. I don't know. I don't, I don't oh, know. yeah, dude's good. <laughs> um, uh, I, I have video. to leave for HR reasons right now. <laughs> Dan is staring straight down right now the at video, his computer. The video that you can't go look at is actually something I did for um, breast cancer awareness, and it's called Save the Boobs. So you is that the one where you're poolside? Yes. Yes. Okay, I did see that. <laughs> oh, look at you. Now you're stretching and like moving arching your back easy, at me. Easy over oh, there, Jay. I'm not complaining. <laughs> Um, so wait, tell us more about that because and we have all these American viewers and our listeners and we want them to know a little bit. Maybe they can go check it out. So can they, if they're not working for Bell Media, they can sure. go to your website and see it. You know, oddly enough, Bell actually was a big support. CTV was a huge supporter of it. But um, I co-chair an annual breast cancer fundraiser for Rethink. It's a big organization. Um, and we do something called the Booby Ball. And it's this really great event, big fundraiser. Um, it's expanded. It's in multiple cities now. But um, a few years back, I created and wrote um, and directed this video. Uh, and the idea of it was to make it look like a beer commercial, but then, you know, it ends up being a breast cancer ad. And the reason was to kind of um, target a younger audience, but also tell people that, you know, boobs are boobs are boobs. Like there isn't a separate breast that gets cancer versus the breast that um, you see in beer commercials. Uh, but uh, it ended up being really successful and was on CNN and the Jay Leno show and The View and ended up kind of. It was a vir- it became a viral video. If you watch it, you'll understand. Why. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to watch it right now. I wasn't now. supposed yeah. to be in it though. So the fact that well, the- I wanted to ask you about that. So what happened? We, you you wrote it for someone else to be in it, yeah. and then they were like, "You have such great boobs. Why don't you just be in it?" <laughs> no, oh. uh, we casted this beautiful girl, and she showed up on the day, and we had like a hundred volunteers that like the best of the best in the business really helped us put this together. And we're at this mansion shooting this thing, and um, we're about to do it, and she comes out in her bikini, and she has great fake breasts Uh, and they were great but we can't really use those for breast cancer commercial might be important so it was in last minute and there was a vote again i uh there's a vote against me or for me to do it um and so i did it and it turned out great it's fantastic Uh, can i can i tell you guys something of course you can i finally got onto the video here (laughs) So I've been so silent. You have to like log in and say what, say your age and everything to see this video. Put, it, put in your cup size. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, no one's ever asked me since then if my breasts are fake. Well, that's good. There's a lot I of guess. there's a lot of bouncage. Yeah, there's a lot of bouncage. A lot of bouncage. Should we just the, leave you the, alone, Tools? No. How about the guy in the uh, the inner tube eating the hot dog? That is pretty funny. Uh, that's a great ass shot. I love. Did you see that? No, I was looking at the guy in the hot dog. <laughs> I've seen this video a lot favorite, yeah. on my own. Where's the ass shot? <laughs> <laughs> is this you? Wait, is that you coming out of the emerging from the pool there? No. Oh, okay, that's not you emerging from the pool. But that was the main part of it, is that the leading cause of cancer death of young women um, between the ages of 29 and, and 49 is actually breast cancer. So that's the whole message behind it.
It's very cool. Yeah, it was uh, very cool. You, awesome job. You do Thank you. you do fine work. Okay, let's get back to the show. Okay, sorry. We got Little, we, we were very sidetracked on this show. It's called Play with AJ. It's very <laughs> suggestive. It's called Play. Yeah. And then it's with AJ. But wait, so anyone could host it? No, this is your show. It's play with AJ. It's, it's just play. And then, mm-hmm. but so someone else could conceivably no, no, come in. No, it's with AJ. Oh, I'm okay. AJ. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's called Play with AJ. You make everything no? so dirty. I'm not supposed to make it feel like that. <laughs> so describe what the show. Yeah, tell us about the show. Um, it's, so I'm really excited about this. Um, it's kind of my entire life, all the worlds I've been in, kind of merging into one. So we talk to athletes about pop culture, and we talk to celebrities about sports. And so we have, we'll talk to, for example, Waka Flocka about his love for the Vikings or Leonardo DiCaprio about the LA Kings. Who, who's the first person? Yeah, who is Waka, Waka Flocka? Flocka Flame? Who, who is that? Who's Waka that? Flocka? You don't know Waka Flocka? I don't know who that oh, is. Oh man, you got to look at Waka Flocka. Okay. Uh, he's a uh, rapper. He's a rapper. Oh, okay. He loves the Vikings. Oh. Um, he's also uh, a spokesperson for PETA. He doesn't like Michael Vick. We had a really long conversation with Michael Vick. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, he's a cool guy. So we talked to him about, like, sports. And then we'll talk to, like, a guy like Joffrey Lupul about his love for going to Coachella and music festivals or, like, you know, the Habs about who their locker room DJ is. So we'll, we we kind of – the cool thing is is that, like, a lot of these athletes who make millions of dollars and are big stars are, like, MTV fans, right? They're, like, 20 to 35 years old and they're in our demo so they love the music and they love the celebrities and love the movies so it's awesome to hear them talk about non-sports stuff so how much have you have you shot a bunch of this already we shot a little bit yeah we actually launch on may 2nd it's our first show okay um, but we shot a few things already tell us it's on mtv canada it's gonna be on mtv what canada. time uh 10 30 p.m on thursday night okay and that's every week every starting week. starting on the second so tell us about the first couple of shows or the first few things that you've shot we have tito ortiz on our first show wow tito yeah. Pretty cool yeah really cool he went fishing at saddam hussein's house weird what? did what did yeah. the husseins invite him well he he's a big fisherman He's a fisherman. Yeah, he's, a fisherman. He's big yeah. into fishing. Yeah. Um, and he catches like really, like he catches, like Tito Ortiz is a big guy. Yeah. He catches fish bigger than him. I'm confused about the Hussein thing. Aren't oh. they all dead? Uh, I don't know if they're all dead. <laughs> I know. Hussein. Hussein. I don't think all the Husseins are dead. I think, okay. I think that, I think he, I know he is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was, he was invited by the troops to go up there. And as he was getting the tour of Saddam Hussein's house, he saw these giant, well, just watch the show. I don't want to ruin it all. No, no, that's yeah. okay. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. <laughs> it's crazy. It's, it's a pretty crazy story. So you spoke with him about that. Yeah. Yeah. And then you mentioned Joffrey Lupul. And then I saw yeah. you went out with uh, King Henrik shopping. Yeah. So Henrik Lundqvist is like, oh, my God, I, I like I adore the guy. Um, but I am a sucker for a man in a suit. Right. Like I love. Right. It's a good thing we wore a suit. <laughs> yeah. it's true. Um, I just I love the look of, of men, especially when you wear a good suit. And I think there is an art to a good suit. A lot of people don't wear a good suit. Yeah. We, we get our suits given to us for free. Yeah. <laughs> He is a very well dressed man. He's awesome. so well dressed. He really is. And the cool thing about Damn. him is that is that dudes like the way he dresses, right? Yeah. Like, and that's so. I, I, he was like, "What do you want to do the interview about?" And I'm like, "Listen, like, you know, you dress well. You've done GQ. You've done Esquire. Why don't you give our viewers like tips on how? Like, every guy wants to look good in a suit. They don't know how. Like, give us tips. So, uh, he brought brought us into one of his favorite suit stores, Tiger of Sweden, and um, obviously because he's also uh, from Sweden and. He showed us how to put together a really good suit and gave some really good tips, like not to, to make sure like the ass of your pants aren't too baggy and that your like blazer mm-hmm. jacket isn't too long and right, how right. big the cuff should be on your suit. Like it's a pants, lot of thought. So, I yeah. wish I wish our suit guy went into that kind of detail <laughs> with us. He's like, Dunnigan didn't want this one. You take it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Henrik, oh! he sent there out he a tweet is. around Christmas in which he uh, made every woman on earth on Twitter fall in love with him because he's like just hanging out at home. It was him all dressed up in like a suit and a tie holding his baby in front of a Christmas tree. You're like, oh, oh my God. yeah, thanks a lot. Make us all look like jerks. Makes me sick. I asked him if he seems like a man to me who doesn't own a sweatshirt. You know what I mean? Like as much yeah. as great as he dresses, his dressing down is still like he looks like a Ralph Lauren commercial. So like my challenge to him was to tweet a picture of him wearing sweatpants because I, I promise you he doesn't own them. Right. And and in general, do you think that athletes are dressing better? I kind of think they are, especially NBA players are dressing like a thousand times better. Uh, baseball these. players, yeah, they, still they, need hardly, some work. <laughs> they hardly ever have to wear suits, so they are just always wearing jeans and t-shirts yeah. and like affliction t-shirts. And I don't yeah. know if I agree with you about the NBA players. 
So wait, like, okay, what I'm talking about is like, for example, the last few weeks they've been sitting LeBron and Dwayne Wade, and so they'll be sitting courtside. I'm not saying it's stuff I would wear. LeBron brings a Louis Vuitton purse to the games. Fair thing. enough. I'm just saying he's he's in these stores. Shot. He cares about. He cares. Clothes. He cares. Yes. It's not my thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not going to carry a purse. But good for him if he wants to carry his Hunger Games novels right. and his merch. That's fine with right. me. But no, it just seems like, guys, you're right. You are absolutely right, AJ. Guys seem to care more about clothes now. Maybe we should start caring more. Here, we, well, we just saw the uh, the Flames walking in for their game. Mike Camilleri was dressed in a nice suit. Yeah. Mike dressed as well, uh, you're, yeah. You're talking about uh, locker room DJs. I was watching the behind-the-scenes Montreal Canadian show. What is it, 24 Hours or what's it called? Oh, on uh, RDS, the RDS one? Yeah, that yeah. we uh, air on TSN. And... um Ryder had just joined the Montreal Canadiens in Toronto for his first game. So the the camera follows him from the airport into the room. And you know what was playing on the on the uh, the ghetto blaster? Waka Flocka? Nickelback. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Nickelback <sighs> is still alive. You know what? Hey, good for them. Can I can I tell you a piece of gossip? Oh, oh we love oh, here gossip. Here we go. Hot gossip. So Jeffrey Lupel told me that Dion Phaneuf plays Katy Perry for them in the gym. <laughs> In the Toronto Maple Leafs dressing room, and they had to fire him from being the locker room DJ. I could see that. That's a yeah. fireable offense, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe maybe Alicia suggested it to him. Maybe, maybe. she thought that that was something that the boys would like. <laughs> the Daisy Dukes and bikinis on top? Yeah, yeah. Maybe she thought that was the, the way to go. So do you have like a dream, sort of a dream list of athletes that you'd like to interview that you haven't interviewed yet? Um, Yeah. Do tell. Would you like to tell us who they are? <laughs> um, uh, I definitely, I obviously really want to interview Sidney Crosby. I think it's right. probably the same list as everybody. I just feel, I just feel kind of dumb saying it. There's no one out of the ordinary That's okay. um, on that list. Uh, obviously, like Alfredson, I'm from Ottawa. I'm a Sens fan, so I'd love yeah. to talk to Alfie. We um, could hook you up. He's a friend of the show. He's a friend of the oh, show. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. He likes us. I yeah. Lo- yeah. Yeah. Pick it up. That would be amazing. Um, who else would I love to interview? Uh, obviously, LeBron. I mean, like the same um, Tortorella. Torts, be, I love that. I, would lo- I think that would be my dream. I want him to yell at me. Yeah. So I bad. Th- I don't think he's going to do that. Uh, how about Tom Brady? You got to line uh, him up. Yeah. Tom Brady would be perfect for our show because he's married to Giselle and he has that crossover. Like a guy like him or like like David Beckham. Because David right. Beckham is like the H&M could, ads. With Brady, there. could he- you just bring a bunch of Uggs? And just try on Uggs with Brady. <laughs> that would be a great... That never made sense to me. That would be a great interview. For, I think that's what you should do. The thing with Tom Brady is that um, dudes love Tom Brady more than girls do. Like, Tom Brady, I would love to interview because he's Tom Brady, but not because I, like, really want him. Like, uh, dudes have bigger crutches on Tom Brady than I think girls do. Yeah, I guess. Maybe. No, like, I would put yeah, money down. People have love-hate on the Patriots, though. The Patriots are like the evil empire. Kristoff is with us on this. And he does almost know. have the perfect life. So. He does. It's, it might be more jealousy than, than I love. would bet money that Dan would dude Brady before I would. Whoa, <laughs> whoa! There's the ah. there's the pull quote of the uh, of the podcast. <laughs> I didn't expect that to come. Wow. You made Dan go into his old man cough, AJ. <laughs> wow. Are you all right? I'm okay. Yeah. So, uh, would you care to answer that? <laughs> I don't, I don't know her level of interest in Dom Brady. Would you, uh, <laughs> you have a few drinks, uh, you're no, in Boston. No, we are walking down this road together. A uh, magical he... encounter between <laughs> human and horse. <laughs> what if he was wearing your mom's raccoon jacket? Oh, someone listens to the <laughs> well, there podcast. There you go. There we go. Now, now what if we're he, on to something. What if he was in a local Peterborough <laughs> theater production? <laughs> Of Annie. (laughs) And he just whipped the coat open and showed you his junk. (laughs) Would you? Dude. Uh, Is it possible he has raccoon Uggs and a raccoon coat? (laughs) Not answering these questions. I don't think I'm having sex with dumb Brady. Wow, I gotta say, AJ, you've succeeded in silencing Dan. I've never seen this Again, that's the first time I've been floored by a comment on the podcast. (laughs) I almost choked on my nos. Usually I'm choking on my saliva, but it was almost the nos. Yeah. You're going to be okay over there? I'm fine now. Okay, good. I just got to watch that video a few more times to get over it. <laughs> um, so the first few segments have been taped already. 
Yes. And how, and so how does it go? Do you are you going to do live interviews as well in studio? Yeah, it's yeah. it's going to be live. At, like so, basically, we'll shoot the show every week because right. it's going to be per- pertinent to what's happening in the worlds of pop culture and sports that week. But we just pre shot a couple of little bumpers here and there, um, just while people were in town. Like Tim McGraw came through, and we really wanted to talk to him because his dad was a professional baseball player. Tug, I love that name, Tug McGraw. That's an awesome it's name. It's a great baseball name, Tug. Tug and so Toolsy will be doing a picture of Brady tonight. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, Brady love. Note. Hashtag Doolsy loves Brady. I don't know where all this came from. How did I get sucked under the Brady buns? Bus. Bus. <laughs> or buns. You could use yeah. buns. Yeah, he's going to suck I you under Brady those bunch. buns. All right. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Where did this thing go? This went off the rails, and I <laughs> love it. I love it. Um, oh, I, another thing I wanted to ask you about, you did some work. Are you still doing work for the NHL Network, AJ? Um, we're still in talks the the shorter season. Um, right now, we're not sure if I'll be doing playoff stuff for them this year, but hopefully, I really love doing did it. You, yeah, tell us more about that. You did a lot of stuff for uh, NHL Net last year. Yeah, so um, they brought me on as one of their playoff reporters. It was for their app and NHL.com, and then they aired it, I think, in interstitials on the network. But um, it was basically like top moments. We did like a countdown. Um, TSN helped us out with it. I think it was on TSN.ca, too. Well, I guess, the, and the other thing is... I feel like you got a kind of a window into how little skill it takes to do what we do and how much more <laughs> skill it takes to do what you do. Is no, that sort of the conclusion no, that you came no, from? No, not it? at all. It was, it was, I mean, God, the, the guys who worked on our team and who watched all those games and, and put together the stats. I mean, it's a, it's hard. Like they really had to know what they were doing. It was a me. It was really cool. But my job was, it was like top 10 fan moments. So it wasn't like the hardcore sports stuff. It was like Kate Upton's in the crowd and we got to show her and talk about her being in the, I mean, I got to do the cool fun. Like, you know, it wasn't the, the hard hitting sports journalism. It was it was stuff like, you know, um, catfish are being thrown on the ice. And is that what led you kind of to pitch this show to MTV? Yeah, what, what made me want to pitch the show is um, I just had had years and years of pop culture interviews under my belt and like actors and musicians. And it's the same thing that you probably get, you know, when you interview a guy in the locker room after a game and you ask him the same questions every game, his answers probably are sound like, you know, uh... Uh, do we have producer Tim? They probably sound like, yeah. <laughs> a little like that. A little like producer Tim. Yeah, like that. Yeah. And yeah. so, uh, and that's the same thing when you interview a musician about his new album. It's the same questions about the same album and the influences and the name of the album. And their answers are uh, like, it's it's the same. So, but when you talk to the guys about their passions, like you talk to any um, any athlete, and I, and I did get that from working at the NHL, but um, when you talk to them about stuff not sports related, they light up and they talk about it. And the same thing on the other side, like you talk to any actor about about sports and they'll just start uh, so i went to coachella a few years ago and we were partying with leonardo dicaprio and it was so Listen to you aj and it was well the cool thing was we were in we were in his like there was like a bunch of us stuffed in his smart car and we're heading to this armani party is that a clown he, show <laughs> it was so weird there was three models in the front seat i'm not kidding you like it was like right out of a weird movie so we're having a and I'm sitting on Leonardo DiCaprio's lap because we were all stuffed in the back. And Leo, he has the worst life. And it was <laughs> and it was so crazy because we were having this conversation about the never ending story, which was my favorite childhood movie and never Leonardo ending Dicar- story. It was unbelievable. My whole world came together in that moment. It was like Right there when I sang? No. Oh. <laughs> when I was on Leo's lap talking about the about talking about Falcor. Um I don't know where I was going with this. Oh, yeah. He started talking about the L.A. Kings, and it was the most that he talked all night, and he just lit up. And he didn't want to talk about his movies or anything that he'd done, but the minute he started talking about sports, he just lit up. And um, I kind of thought, like, why don't why don't we do more of this? Because, like I said, like these guys, especially the athletes, are the same age as our viewers. They just live way cooler lives than most of us, you know? Well, not than you. Maybe than Dan and I. You mentioned, You live a pretty cool life. should show you what I'm looking at. You mentioned Kate Upton and... We already saw your video, so I thought we'd pull up this video here. (laughs) Okay, but they they can't see. This is the Cat Daddy uh, Terry Richardson video. Oh, yeah. Everyone needs to Google this video. Kate Upton doing the Dougie in... No, it's the Cat Daddy. It's the Cat Daddy. Uh, Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, it's spectacular. So make sure you Google that. This is great listening. (laughs) Yeah, so we're all just crowded around watching Kate Upton on his screen (laughs) in her bikini. (laughs) Okay, Jay. Um, so once again, May 2nd. May 2nd. MTV Canada. Yep. 
And there is a possibility for our American listeners, you're kind of in talks, maybe it's going to come to the States, right? Yeah, I don't well, want to get ahead of myself. Yeah, there. we don't. I'm definitely hoping that it gets online, at least so people can watch it on right. in the States, which it will on the MTV website. But right. Yeah, no, I'm really, really excited. It should be really good. You guys are more than welcome to stop by anytime you want. We'd love That's to. Perfect. That sounds fantastic. So you guys really don't um, wipe your butts after number twos? No, that's me. That's me. When you're in college and it's no toilet paper. Big deuce here. <laughs> no, that's, I more of a, like, I could really use a bidet, really, is what I could use. Who doesn't? But, uh, no, I just, it's just better never, for you. Never? I try not to. Like, if I'm at home, right, I can just you know jump that in the shower. Weird? Like, you guys have, like, a very, like, normal conversation about this, but for everyone listening, that's really weird. Why? Cause just use toilet paper, dude. Yeah. Why? Get over it. What, but if you're at home alone, <laughs> if you're do, you're doing at a home game, you're you're playing in a home game. You're on your home turf. You're on your home ice. Have you seen those commercials with the puppy that slides into the really soft toilet paper? Yeah, but that stuff still irritates your bum. Still irritates your little bum. I never saw the puppy slide in toilet paper. <laughs> Sounds good. I know what she's talking about. <laughs> no, I just think if you're home alone. Just fire up that shower, get in there, scrub down. I just think that's really weird, but I just wanted okay. to ask you face to face to see if you'd hold up. I would never lie to you, AJ. I think you should wipe your bum with toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Aaliyah Jasmine thinks I should wipe my bum with toilet paper. That's where we're going to end this interview, right here. Started with boobs, ended with your ass. Thank really, you for having me on, guys. I think it went really well. <laughs> Thanks, AJ. And May 2nd, MTV Canada, Play. 10.30. Play with AJ. Play with AJ. Play with AJ. <laughs> It's suggestive. It's going to be good. Oh, by the way, first show. Who's who's on the first show? It's uh, uh, Tito Ortiz. Tito. And hopefully we'll have a little Joffrey Lupul on as well. Perfect. Talking about my morning jacket or something like that. Absolutely. Yeah, he loves that. Band. And Kate Upton. And Kate Upton. And a little Dan Bang and Brady. And a little Dan and Brady in a <laughs> raccoon coat by the fire. <laughs> Just wrapped up in a raccoon fur coat. I don't know how I got wrapped <laughs> Sorry, Dulcie. That's okay. Thanks, AJ. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. That was fun. Yeah. I uh, I like her. Took took it a long way to get into that YouTube video to see, but uh, we got there. She's got a lot of suggestive material on her website. Uh, so I'm going to have to visit that website when I get home. Every time it. I wipe my bum now, I'm going to think of AJ. <laughs> it's very bizarre. <laughs> there she goes. See you later. <laughs> she is so creeped out. Yeah, she is probably a little creeped out. Where's the girl? <laughs> She's gone. She left. That was our first in-studio female. She's the only one who'll show up. <laughs> what? Yeah, everyone else is just over the... No, 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 that's fine. I'll just do it over the phone. Uh, Natasha, you want to come down to the... No, no, I <laughs> got the tennis lesson. It's 40 below. No, it's for the best. <laughs> so we will tweet the, the link to her... Uh, to our website. Or I could probably just give it out here, right? Um, well, maybe... Well, what, like we said, we'll put the Akity Bathurst Titan stuff and uh, link to AJ's website on the J and Dan... At J and Dan TSN. It's AaliyahJasmine.com. If you don't know how to spell her name, then... Screw you. Then you're illiterate. <laughs> Jeremy Taggart's here with us again. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? <laughs> wow, it's uh, we're getting be, over. Uh, we're getting over that interview. A couple of things. Uh, <laughs> What's going on, boys? <laughs> well, you're not quite as attractive as the previous guest. <laughs> well, that's can't funny. lie to you. Hey, you know what? At least you guys are manly men. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, another thing we discovered <laughs> is that Dan no. wants to make love to no. New England Patriots star quarterback Tom Brady. Uh, her point was, she said, uh, she said guys like Brady more than women do, and she said. I bet you, what, what was it? That Dan you, wants to dude, be Brady more than I want to dude, be Brady. Why do you want to dude? be him? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. She just threw me, she threw me under the bus. He's got nice hair, I'll admit that, but still, yeah. that's kind of like Peter North hair. Like, you just, it's nice. Yeah, it's, he's got nice move. hair. You're not supposed to touch it, I heard. Peter North. Don't touch my hair. That's right. <laughs> Here comes an enormous amount of... <laughs> 
dude. Now leave my hair alone. I uh, shared a plane ride with Peter North one time. Whoa, we yeah. need to back this up. By the way, Canadian, by the way, Canadian, yeah. proud Canadian, Peter yes. North, the male porn star extraordinaire. And wait a minute, you sh- you sat next to him? Sat right next to wow. him. Not, not only was I in line, I was like, hey, that's Peter North. And then I'm like sitting right next to him, too. And I like watched him like watch the movie and the kind of food that he ate. <laughs> He had like a bag of chips and watched like some terrible like a thriller. It was uh, from Toronto to L.A. It was very. Uh, he's very ninety nine percent. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> he's very much part of the ninety nine percent. Yes, it uh, was Coach. Now does. He... <laughs> So and they, apparently he was real quiet and kind of standoffish in the, in the and then here I am at the in the LA airport getting into a cab and of course he's right next door on the line to the cab and some guy starts chatting him up and he's big Steelers fan starts going off oh yeah I love the Steelers oh yeah great starts going <laughs> off about the Steelers so <laughs> he likes uh, Lay's chips he had, he had a uh, a soda well, I just think that everything... <laughs> he, had, he had nice shoes on. But he's famous for the quantity of his dude. Oh, no. So, like, it always makes me think, I can't think, even like, get onto the Peter North Wikipedia site. Well, you're not going to... If you can't get onto AJ's site, you're not going to get onto Peter North's <laughs> dude site. Jeepers, creepers. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the Wikipedia. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think they're, yeah. I don't he's think real they're normal. There. He's a real normal guy. You, you, because on the Wikipedia, will have a list of all his movies, and they won't. I'm giving you better won't. info than the Wikipedia. Yeah, he right. likes Lay's chips. He likes a cheap so, thriller. He, he's got nice shoes, and he likes the Steelers. Yeah. That's all we need to know. <laughs> I wish I could remember the movie he watched. It was like Green Lantern or something. <laughs> Oh, so this is fairly recent. Yeah, yeah, it was like last year. Oh, Green yeah. Lantern. We talked about that on a past what? podcast. How what? I never, dude. Oh, yeah. God, <laughs> one of those guys, and he was like <laughs> right into it. Right Peter into North it. was like, I could make a porn out of this. I'll be Green Lantern. <laughs> I could be. Some... I could do that hair. <laughs> he was very just stat. I guess if the movie wasn't on, he would have been like uh, Putty from. Seinfeld just yeah. staring at the season and <laughs> yeah. being, fine with, being fine with that. You know, like, I'm just I'm going to eat my chips, have my soda, and stare at the seat. Hey, vegetable lasagna, zip it. I could load it more than anybody right now. Wouldn't that be great if you just stood up in the plane and just said, Hey, everyone, just to let you know, I can do more than any of you combined. Right here. I'll drop my pants and do it right here. Who wants to challenge me? How old is this guy now? Because I can't. Oh, I it's got to be like, 50. Yeah, oh, he's got to be. He's born in the 57. There you go. Okay. So he's right up there. Getting close. Getting close. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we were speaking of uh, funny faces that people make when they. Dude, we saw Mick Fleetwood last night. Yeah. <laughs> How about those facial expressions on that drummer? They gave him about 10 minutes to do his own thing. Yeah. So he had the mic on and they had the camera right on him. So, oh, I got a funny story about a drum solo. You know, uh, the drummer for April Wine. The, the sound guy didn't like him, apparently, and he cranked his mic because he had one of those little mics at the side of his, his mouth, and during the drum solo, he cranked the mic, so you hear this, like, <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, way louder than the drum solo. <laughs> so you hear him, like, huffing and hawing in, like, the late 90s. Wow. Just dying. <laughs> 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 I feel bad for Jerry him. Mercer. I feel yeah. I Jerry feel bad Mercer. for him. Huh? Yeah. Wouldn't he have known? What could he have hurt himself? <laughs> no, 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 he's deaf. He's drummer. <laughs> they never wore earplugs in the seventies. How's have your you... hearing, by the way? Awesome. Yeah. I Is wore it? earplugs from like the first day I started playing. Nice. Oh, really? I have the hearing of a regular person on the street. Really? Age, yes. That's amazing. And, but and have you ever done a drum solo with a mic with a mic no, on? And no, just I, like... I've never sang backups in the studio a little bit, but never live. I'm oh, okay. too busy up there. Yeah, you've got too much going on. Yeah. But you were talking about like we were talking about Mick Fleetwood. He has he has the gong. Oh yeah. Did he, he use the chimes? gong? Nah. I he didn't really. See the gong. He, he. I didn't really see him use it, but he had it there. Yeah. It he's was got there. the chimes. He does that in in uh, in the chain, doesn't he? Hit the chimes. That's right. Yeah. At the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah, that's the that's the bass solo that they didn't turn up the bass high enough on. Yeah, the, McVie has dum, that awesome. Da, da, dum, oh, yeah. Da, da, dum, dum, dum. yeah, that's a great song. How about those the guitars like? 
Buckingham's guitar he playing. He was unreal. Yeah. He was incredible. So good. Yeah, the tone he was really crazy. good. Yeah. We, okay, we uh, played a song earlier on the podcast. The, well, it's not his. It's Fleetwood Mac, the uh, Looking Out for Love. Oh, yeah. But big, he played that love. on acoustic. Yeah. Crazy. Oh, just killed it. Yeah. They were and good. Mick they did were good. it solo. Was he doing like really crazy faces? He was like, uh, he was like, are you still with me? <laughs> oh, he was talking? <laughs> are you still with me? I was like, is this guy like, is this Gandalf? He looked like Gandalf. He was like, you shall not pass. <laughs> He was he's good like, though. He's like six foot nine. I was telling Toolsy. And it, was he wearing tights? He, oh, I'm sure. He because in on the Rumors album Leader cover he has the and... yeah he has this, so like the the short pants yeah clam yeah. diggers. But then he also has just like the Rumors <laughs> cover. He had the black vest, yeah. white shirt. You like know, he's the man of that band. Like it yeah, was, he's the manager. He's the man. Well, he was it. Like he's like the Mick Jagger of Fleetwood Mac. He's so because cool. he he picked. Buckingham as a guitarist, right? Like he kind of yeah, put them together, the, and they were like kind of like a prog rock band in the early early days, and then they obviously got more. Pop Peter as, Green was the guitarist. Yeah, and the funniest story I was I was telling Toolsy we were reading on uh, Wikipedia that um, Peter Green to entice John McVie to join the band to be the bass player. That's why they called them Fleetwood Mac. Like yeah. they were like, we will call this yeah. band. Yeah. We'll name this band after you. Yeah. And even then, he still didn't join. Yeah, he still didn't <laughs> join. He waited for a year, and they they had another bass player. And they said to the other bass player, "You can join, but if McVie wants to join at any point, you're out." Yeah. And a year later, he eventually joined. He's and he that was that badass. It. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess he is. And yeah. at some point in time, everyone in that band has made love to. Oh another. yeah! Oh yeah! Sure. They Dude, it up half of Peru. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Late seventies. I was watching this. I was telling Toolsy too. This the the making of Tusk. Oh yeah! A YouTube documentary. Just seek it out. It's incredible yeah. because it's just like we did a record in that studio where they did West the, Village Recorders. Yes, yes, really. Yes. Wow! And, and there's a you see the room that they built for that. They actually built a room that's completely all cement all the way up. That's where they did the drums to in the air tonight. That overdubbed fills. Oh, yeah. Literally, like that stu. <laughs> that studio like ended their whole everything. Everything like went dude in a handbasket in that studio. That's where it all went down. They were doing a lot of drugs. A lot of drugs. A lot of fighting. <laughs> a lot of fighting. A lot of making love. Yeah. 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 A lot of make it kind of like a regular Saturday night at Toolsies and Brady's. Hey, I forgot to mention, um, you were out at my house. Oh, Saturday. really? I, I did go out to the uh, to the burps. What's Can't, that like? To Buffalo Wild Wing. We went to oh. Buffalo Wild Wing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I uh, my old youngest daughter almost died <laughs> because of me. That's a great. Not moment. another one. Here. Well, I gave her a carrot off of my uh, off of my wing plate, and I had the the habanero mango, oh, and, and a bit of the sauce was on the carrot. Yeah, little kids with hot sauce is terrible to watch. Yeah. So people Jay, went to jail for that in the states. <laughs> Jay witnessed it. I saw it. I saw it going. But your wife was quick. She was like, Dad. <laughs> And then you saw because she took a little bite. Oh, Ruby did, but then you, did you get her a, a milk she or had, something? She had milk going, and okay. it was like she's tough. She's but just she like, shot gun right, that milk. I'm fine. I'm good. I had a little milk. <laughs> did I'm she good. cry a little bit? No, no crying. No. no tears. Really? I was shocked. There's no oh. tears allowed in my house. That's yeah. right. It's just like no threes company and no tears. <laughs> it's no be tear zone. Parenting by fear is what <laughs> happens at the O'Toole's. Yeah. It's the <laughs> 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 oh, that does stick in the head like a real knife. Oh, eh? it sure does. It. Oh, great. It's nice. it's a, oh, we have a special <laughs> TV theme. Actually, I thought of you. I thought you would enjoy it, Jeremy Taggart. So we, we, do you want to get to that now? Or do you want to do this one? This is another. Oh, let's get to that first. Yeah, yeah. Let's get to that first. Can we do? Uh, sorry, Christoph. Uh, this is something K actually. Kmart. Producer Tim yeah. um, pointed out to us. He sent us the link and um, I'd never seen it. But now it's a YouTube sensation as well. This new Kmart commercial. This is going to win awards. Ship my pants. <laughs> right here? Ship my pants? You're kidding. You can ship your pants right here. You hear that? I can ship my pants for free. Wow. I just may ship my pants. Yeah, ship your pants. Billy, you can ship your pants, too. I can't wait to ship my pants, Dad. <laughs> I just shipped my pants, and it's very convenient. Very convenient. I just shipped my drawers. <laughs> I just shipped my nighty. I just shipped my bed. <laughs> you can't find what you're looking for in store? We'll find it at Kmart.com right now and ship it to you The guy for free. at the end is legendary. That is awesome. He pulled out his I inner Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> I just shipped my drawers. <laughs> That's great.
Great. Uh, People are getting funny in the darn commercial world, hey? Oh, it's That's almost right. like commercials are more creative That's where the than money TV is. and movies are. Yeah. yeah. I, I think so some of those A&W commercials are pretty funny, believe it or not. With the, the with the old the, the one where the guy? guy backs up three times, I find that to be funny for some reason. I don't know why, but the way that guy acts, like the cheap burger guy, yeah, yeah. in the car, it's not bad. Yeah, no, there's some good stuff out there. I wouldn't say it was as funny as shipping the pants. <laughs> <laughs> I, and who knew Kmart was still open? I guess just in the states. Well, I've actually heard that a lot of comedians, I've in interviews and stuff, saying that they they don't do TV as much because there's no money in it, and they're doing commercials. So that's probably why. It makes sense. You got Dave everyone's, Chappelle doing your uh, Kmart commercials. Everyone's in Old Navy commercials, including Paul Anka, who was behind me at dinner on Master Sunday. Yeah, did you hear about this? Holy uh, socks. Yeah, to, yeah, Toolsy hangs out with the high rollers. AJ well, sit, AJ sitting on Leo's lap. So we walk into this place, and this guy, he comes out, he's like 60-something. He's like, Paul Anka's in there. We're like, what? So we walk in, Paul Anka's just having dinner with a woman that... That had a little work done. Little so work. is he, though. He's had a little work. Oh, yeah. He that. looks great. Looks like he just got, got out of got the back from plastic the beach. surgeon. No, oh, just looks like he goes into the place. Give me the Ken doll. <laughs> <laughs> I want the Ken doll face. Because he was in the. Give me a bit of bronzer. No, he was in a Volkswagen or a Old Navy commercial. I think it was Volkswagen. Volkswagen. Where he was he's singing in the, the back, back seat. Yeah. <sighs> he's, he's made it. That guy makes like a, $100 a minute. From all his songs. Because he, he wrote so many good songs. Yeah, he That's just sits yeah. there and reels it in. Big time. Good Canadian boy. Whoa, we have an update. Maybe he and uh, he and Peter North could do a duet. I'd Will like he? to see that in terms of the funny <laughs> hilarity, not the sex. Uh, before we get into TV and the humility so. and uh, a Taggart tale, Aaliyah Jasmine just sent her a tweet. Oh? Oops. Said... Just did the podcast with On Right No Tool. I have literally no idea how that went, but I feel dirty, and Ooh. I think I like it. I just shit my drawers. <laughs> <laughs> Jeepers, that's a good good commercial. I love Jeepers. That's one of, that's one of the best things to say ever. <laughs> Jeepers, <laughs> creepers. Hey, Where'd let's, you get those pe- <clears throat> Let's hear a tiger tale. Yeah. Okay, this one takes us back to the <laughs> early 80s. <laughs> My father was driving home from Sears. It was a, a blitzkrieg of a, of a winter storm. Uh, you know how it storms up in the snow belt? He was uh, driving through Caledon, and the car just kaput. And this car was a Vega. It was a big deal for the family because... Uh, my mother's brother or something gave it to us, and it was brand new. We didn't realize that he was thinking it was a lemon and passed it off, but we were, like, literally real, thinking it was, like, my mom was actually singing, we're in the money when we got this car. <laughs> and anyway, it just stops on the side of the road during a blizzard, and my dad's standing there with the jacket. I'm, I wasn't in the car, obviously. And uh, he tried to look in under the hood or something and probably got hotter and hotter and decides instead of waiting for, you know, to flag somebody down or go to the nearest house, he decides to walk from Caledon to Mansfield. Like, dude, I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at home and, uh, you know, he finishes work at like three o'clock and we're at home going, where's dad? And it's getting darker and darker. It's like 730. We're all starting to get worried. We haven't heard anything. 8.30, 9.30, we're waiting and waiting. It's like, you know, 45 minutes up the road, probably an hour. And all of a sudden, like, you know, 10 o'clock at night, the front door opens. And we're all, like, so glad that it's that he's ho- actually alive and he's all right. And all he does is just open the door. And my mom's like, what's the matter? Dude, car doesn't start. Slams the door, walks right into the bedroom and goes to bed. <laughs> Because he just walked for six hours from the car. Just oh. goes right to bed. And he gets up in the morning, and all I hear is, Ronnie's not going to work today. <laughs> if only... <laughs> <laughs> right, he's losing a lung. <laughs> Ronnie's not going to work today. I had an old man toolsy moment If there. only... <laughs> 
if only he had a GoPro attached to his head oh, on a six yeah. hour walk. I can't imagine the things that he was saying on the way home. <laughs> he probably took a few ventures into the woods and or back some out people on the like, road. can I help you out? Dude. Oh. <laughs> I want to get back to my bed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so when did you eventually go back and uh, get the? Well, I, we, my grandparents lived across the street, so my, you know, they took them to the car and they got it serviced. <laughs> it blew a gasket, the head gasket, which oh, no. ended up blowing like twenty times after that. Vegas are the oh, worst. God, that's funny. What a guy! I wish yeah. there was a GoPro attached to Ron Taggart's head right at all times. <laughs> right now, at all, mo every moment. My mom actually said the other day. She goes. Uh, she was at my house, and she's like, oh, Dad, Dad's getting a little mean and crazy, but a bit angry lately again. I'm like, oh, jeez. <laughs> More like stories. Further, <laughs> further level. I'm like, what happened? What happened? Yeah. So More material. He, he's just been getting a little bit crusty. <laughs> well, maybe he'll like this story this week, and it'll because you said he enjoys yeah, he the does, stories. He, like, he likes he, the notoriety. He, enjoy, well, he enjoys the fact that it's out there. Just more information. It's you know? therapy. If he can <laughs> see it through someone else's eyes, yeah, then it... I, totally. Totally. Um, Let's hear some th some themes. Man. Okay, here's the oh, deal. this one. We well, well, chose one. Okay, Tulsi, so you go first. <laughs> well, and then... here's the process of getting the TV themes. Of course, we look at all your suggestions um, that you send us on Twitter. And a lot of times, Wright C and I will be sitting and we'll send her an email to Christoph and Mike. Say, hey, can we get this? So... We forget when we send them. We we aren't very smart, so we sent like a seven suggestions for yeah. this week. Yeah, there was a lot. So we're only we, going to go with two. Yeah, we each chose one. Yeah. This is mine from a famous cartoon and probably one of the catchiest themes you'll ever hear. George, George, George of the jungle strong. Yes, he can be. Watch out for that tree. George. George of the jungle lives a life that's free. Watch out for that tree. When he gets in the street, he makes his escape with the help of his friend, and eat the deep. Then away he'll slap on his elephant shell, walk fella, and Ursula stay in step. Where George, George, George of the jungle, friend to you and me. Watch out for that tree. That's pretty catchy. That's the wrecking crew again, I bet. George, George, How Blaine George, on the jungle. Like, who's the guy doing the scream? Yeah, the is that studio? Ron Taggart? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was so those early. Are, those are hearty yells, eh? Wow. From uh, September 9th to December 30th, 1967, it ran in conjunction. It was uh, each episode featured three segments in the form of three unrelated cartoons: George of the Jungle, Tom Slick, and Super Chicken. I only remember George of the Jungle, but uh, that, that's my TV. That's an intense uh, opening theme. That's just like a wake you up theme right there. That's it's, a Saturday morning jumper. What right a song, there. though. That's a. Uh, that's a catchy. Jingle. I would love to have seen the guy doing the the vocals. <laughs> yeah. That would have been hilarious. what a great gig. Um, okay, I have one, and um, I this is actually this was requested by one of our listeners on Twitter, but in fact, Jeremy Taggart requested this many many moons ago, and uh, we're finally going to deliver for him. This is an old CBC classic. Dreams up for the night. Days are wide awake. Visions of a crazy man. I mean, for goodness sake, but I'm seeing things. I'm seeing things. I'm seeing things. Believe me, I've never seen before. My little things deceive me. Like when you threw me out the door. That's so bad. He's like, let's just Anthony Kiedis our way through the final two lines and ba-da-dee-bop, ba-da-bop. I don't remember that show. 
Oh, there's the one Louis Del Grande with the glasses, and he used to I'm like looking at it here. He'd have these visions of of murders or something happened to someone, and he'd be able to figure it out by sleeping or going to bed. It would like he would just be standing there, and all of a sudden he'd get a vision, and he would see half the murder happen in his head, and then yeah. he would piece it together over the course of the episode, and it was kind of funny, and he was good. I think he created King of Kensington too. I think he did. I could be wrong about that. I'd like to think he's an, it was a bit of an ego maniacal I, crazy I, guy. I would love to have him on the podcast. I really would. How like, about Jonathan Torrens tweeting that he actually found the original script of that show typed in his, his desk? That was crazy. Isn't that amazing? See, that's crazy. I'd like to see that. You think of all the things that are in that building. Like It, it must just be unbelievable. I heard they dumped all the props, like the tickle trunk. No, and all the tickle trunk's stuff. in the museum. We still there. This, yeah. <clears throat> I'd pay good money for it. I I'd take Finnegan. Would. How much is Finnegan? Would know. you what, Would you put a raccoon coat in the tickle K truck? Casey? I'd put Casey and Finnegan in there. They've got to be around. Yeah. And a bunch of habanero spiced carrot sticks. <laughs> and brown glasses for days from er Ernie Coombs. That's right, from Mr. Dress. <laughs> Big, like square, them. round glasses. Those kind of creepy ones that get you on the watch list nowadays. Yeah, Ernie. <laughs> Mr. Dress Up. Well, the guy on Seeing Things has the same glasses. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's probably Maybe, the same. Does they they CBC only have one pair of glasses? Guys, head to props. You'll get your glasses. <laughs> um, Just get him a set of Ernie Coombs glasses. <laughs> we'll get you some of your own. Don't worry. That, uh, was, that was a terrible show. <laughs> I just, I'm ama The thing, though, that we always talk about... Was the theme goes on, and then it's like the breakdown. Yeah. You don't normally get that with a theme song, right? It usually stays on I one. I wonder who that was, because you know you would think that uh, you know might have been a, a a band from the day or something, some Canadian, or perhaps it was just some maybe slaps from CBC putting something together. Maybe it was April Wine. Maybe it was Jerry Mercer on the drums there. <laughs> you guys want another catchy tune? Yes, from our vintage commercial commercials. Again, we sent several options for this one because. Uh, Again, we, we don't realize how many times we've emailed yeah. Mike and Kristoff. I'm just constantly apologizing <laughs> to Mike and Kristoff for this. <laughs> for everything, really. But this one, this one is a catchy, a catchy tune. You'll know. Power Wheels Raider, Power Wheels High Rider, Power Wheels Classic Convertible, each sold separately, all battery powered with real motors. Your parents assemble them easily, then off you go over the hills, around the trees. Power Wheels Classic Convertible Raider and High Rider, all run on rechargeable batteries, each sold separately. What was the one line there? He delivered Around the it with, trees, going with outside. such yes. unenthusiasm. <laughs> off you go into the trees. Yeah, you're not going to the trees, aren't Put you? Put the batteries in and off you go yeah. into the trees. <laughs> going to get on your power wheels. Could, could you do one more take? No, I'm doing one. That's, that's it. it. Can well, we hear that? I'm that a one, yeah, it's supposed one to take like wonder. sinister or something. Oh, oh. Power wheels, power wheels, power wheels, make me go. Your parents assemble them easily, then off you go over the hills, around the trees. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Hells around the trees. <laughs> like, sell it a bit better. The parents assemble them easily, then off you go over the hills, around the trees. Oh, oh, oh. We gonna do another one? No, I gotta get out of here. I gotta do big wheel. I'm commercial. gonna have sing you, uh, the Seeing Things theme song. Have you priced out those Power Wheels? They're ex they're like five hundred bucks. Really? What? Yeah. You still you can still buy these? Oh yeah, Toys R Us has a whole section. They're all lined up. It's like a showroom. Are they oh. like remote control cars? No, though they're ones you sit in. You drive the oh, kids drive the, them. Yeah. Oh, those are the I call those the divorce mobiles. Like, <laughs> it's the dad yeah. who like is trying exactly. to keep his kid oh, happy, yeah. right? <laughs> Got him the five hundred dollar Escalade because yeah. he's not home. That's right, the Land Rover. <laughs> Yes. You, you can get the Escalades, you can get Jeeps, you can get like <laughs> yeah. mini tractors. The bad dad mobile. <laughs> they, they aren't safe. If you got them in a, a crowded neighborhood, yeah, kids are just driving onto the street. You drive them around the schwa, happy, though, couldn't you? Happy households don't have those things. You just, <laughs> it's true. It's, it's the bad dads. It's, in general, divorced kids almost seem to have better lives, don't they? They get more presents, well, they get just, more fun, I they remember, get to do things every weekend. They're alone a lot, <laughs> driving their Escalades. In the backyard. Well, I'm, I'm over the hill, I'm around the trees, what do I do now? I did what the guy told me to in the commercial. <laughs> now I, I'm lost. Uh, just stay here. Or? Dad? Dad, Dad, are you coming home? Buy me weekend? another one of these. This one's broken. I want to run over it with my other one.
<laughs> but dad, you're not coming to my you're not coming to my baseball game? No, but I got you a nice Escalade, kid. Go over the hills and around the trees with it. <laughs> Daddy'll be home later, okay? Good stuff, son. Best dad ever. Bumper sticker on the back. Daddy loves <laughs> you. You you know that, don't you? <laughs> Uh, that was episode 30. We've gone a lot of different places on this podcast. This was, this was a, a really great episode. Um, I, I can't lie to you. I think it's one of the best we've ever done. I agree. And um, I just have to say thank you to Jeremy Taggart for not only uh, being on this episode, but, but several of our greatest episodes. We've been yeah. thrilled to have you here, my friend. Thank you. You and, guys are uh, unbelievable. We had a good time. Mike and Kristoff, thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. He's actually crying right now. <clears throat> He's got tears. I'm pretty upset. And <laughs> I believe I may have, uh, I might get a call from HR because Kristoff pointed out. Oh, no. When I was watching the, the video, the, uh, the breast cancer awareness video, Aaliyah could see the reflection of it in the window behind me and she was watching and she's like hey she's looking at me like oh what a no curry. yeah yeah, yeah i was just doing research yeah you be your pants were no, down but you know was she sitting was she sitting here yeah because yes. yeah. i can't i can't see the i can see the corner but not the yeah you can't screen. see everything you're you're blocking I think with you're your good i think your shoulders i think you're concerned you're just no she here, was doing that from how you were looking at her here yeah. let's tell me if you can see this video here. okay I, again, I cannot at all again this is great podcast <laughs> listening well we're just testing to see if i'm in trouble no okay. it was the looks you were giving okay we'll make that the cliffhanger can you see is it? dan no. in trouble with human resources at bell find out in episode 31 on a, lo on yeah. a lower you could lower yourself a little, because she was sitting low. Not at all. No, you can't see anything. No closely. dice. You're, I can see good. it, but you can't see it from there. You're fine. You're watching the Kate Upton one now. You're not even watching Lee Jasmine. Yeah, way to go he's to. He's all scene. quiet. Yeah. He's got those thirteen-year-old oh, quiet yeah. eyes. It's because he's quiet eyes. I'm watching you. No, it's not quiet eyes. Uh, Is it quiet eyes? Private eyes. No, wild <laughs> eyes by the Stampeders. Quiet eyes. Can't look away from your quiet eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, a lot of people wanted, for the swear word insert, a lot of people wanted me to, drum us to use my, uh, my, yeah. Which is good. Oh, we can still do that. We could, we could do that in episode 31. When we find out if Dan is still working at Bell Media. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at J and Dan TSN, we'll give you that uh, Ackity Bathers Titan information. Go see the games. Of course, the season's over, so you can't do that. And Power Wheels, we'd love to have it as a sponsor. Yeah, still waiting for a sponsor. Thanks for listening, everyone. Bye bye. I just shit my drawers. They're going home. Dance. Dance. Keep dancing.